With the ever-increasing profitability of raising goats and sheep, many cattlemen are considering diversifying. So a common question that I get is, can you run goats and sheep with cattle? And the answer is, yes, you can. In this video, we're going to talk about some things to consider when doing so. Come along. If you have cattle and you're considering getting goats and sheep, probably the first thing that you need to think about is your infrastructure. I'm talking about fences, catch pens, barns, things of that nature. When it comes to fencing, depending on what you already have, you may have to make some modifications. If you have what is typically known as field fence, also known as net wire, woven wire, or hog wire, you may be good to go. However, you probably want to inspect it because what will hold a cow in won't always hold a goat in. So if you have holes in your net wiring, know that goats and sheep will potentially get out. Also, if you have uh, low areas where the ground dips down and leaves a gap between the bottom of the fence and the ground, you're likely to have goats and sheep get out there. So you may have to make some modifications to make sure that that'll work. So if you just have a typical five or six strand barbed wire fence, that's probably not going to be sufficient for goats and sheep. Uh, you will have goats get out, they will get in your neighbor's garden, and you will have angry neighbors. It actually may contain sheep, but the bigger problem is it won't keep predators out. And I realize that if a dog or a coyote gets in with a group of mature cattle, it's probably not a major threat to them. But dogs and coyotes are a major threat to goats and sheep. So you need fencing that is predator proof. And probably one of the easiest and also the most inexpensive ways to convert a typical five or six strand barbed wire fence into something that is goat or sheep worthy is to use electrified hot wire. You can run a few strips of uh, a couple of strands of electrified hot wire along the bottom of your barbed wire fence. And it does really well for both the containment of the goats and sheep and also keeping predators out. At the end of this video, I will link to a video that I did on the best fencing for goats and sheep. And in that video, I described the process of the spacing of the wires that does a really good job of both containing the animals and also keeping predators out. So check that out at the end of the video. It may also be necessary to make some modifications to your catch pin or your holding pin. If you use the traditional corral panels that many people use for a holding pen for cattle, that probably won't hold goats or sheep. Uh, if you have a wooden structure that has slats that are more than eight inches in spacing or eight inches off the ground, goats and sheep are probably able to go under or through those as well. However, a simple solution is to just take a welded wire cattle panel, sometimes called bull panels, and overlay the inside of your corral with those. You can also just take field fence or net wiring and zip tie or fasten that on the inside, and that usually suffices for holding goats and sheep in. When it comes to shelter, sheep don't necessarily have to have shelter, at least not in the south where I live. Probably up north it would be good for them. However, goats do. So if you don't have a shelter for your cattle, a barn, a lean-to, something like that, and you're considering getting goats, you probably will have to invest in just something to keep them out of the rain and out of the wind. For goats to thrive, they really need some type of shelter from the elements. One other thing to consider is your watering system. Now, if your cattle are drinking from stock ponds or from uh, streams, that will work fine for goats and sheep. They do well drinking from natural water sources. However, if your only source of water for your cattle is one of these large 100 gallon or larger uh, water troughs, many times those are too high for goats and sheep to be able to reach up and drink out of, it, particularly for the young. So you may have to modify and come up with something that is a little bit lower for your goats and sheep to drink from, particularly your young goats and sheep to drink from. Hey, if you're finding this video to be helpful, all I ask is that you would give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notifications if you'd like to receive more content like this. Probably the greatest benefit to running goats and sheep together is parasite control. For the most part, the parasites that goats and sheep get, which by the way is the number one problem for goats and sheep are parasites. The parasites that goats and sheep get cannot survive in a cow. 
And the parasites that cattle get can't survive in goats and sheep. And for this reason, they're very mutually beneficial for each other. While you can take advantage of this by running goats and sheep side by side with cattle in the same pasture at the same time, for maximum benefit, it's good to implement a rotational strategy. Your rotational strategy may look something like this. Take a section of your pasture, a paddock of your pasture, and bring your goats and sheep in and let them graze it down to whatever level that you desire. Then move your goats and sheep out and let that section of the pasture rest for about 30 days. During that 30-day period of time, a couple of things are happening. First of all, the parasites that were left there by the goats and sheep are dying out, number one. Number two, your grass is growing. And by the end of 30 days, the nutritional value of that grass is going to be tall and it's going to be just about at its peak nutritional value. After about 30 days, then move your cows in and let your cattle graze that down. Now, any parasites that survived the 30-day rest period are now being consumed by your cattle, but can't survive in your cattle's digestive tract and are dying. Leave your cows in there till they've got it grazed down sufficiently. Move them out. Let that paddock rest for another 30 days while your grass grows and while the parasites die out, and then move your goats and sheep back in. By this point, it's practically a clean pasture for your goats and sheep as they come back in. All of the parasites that they left from last time they were in the paddock are now gone. So you're starting over with a clean pasture. So basically, you have a cycle of these two different species coming in and vacuuming the pasture for each other of the parasites that would be harmful to them. One of the advantages of running goats with cattle is that goats are browsers and they prefer things like saplings and hedge bushes, privet, blackberry bushes, things that cattle don't always utilize. Cattle prefer grass, but the goats prefer browse. Therefore, many people will put goats in with their cattle to control around their fence lines and around their pasture, any saplings or bushes that tend to be growing up. So this helps utilize your property a little bit better. It's also possible that cattle help as predator control when it comes to goats and sheep. I know of situations where dogs have gotten into a pasture and the goats ran to the cattle and the cattle kind of surrounded the goats and protected the goats from the dogs. I, I wouldn't count on that in every situation. I wouldn't depend upon cattle to be your primary protection for predators, but it is possible that they can help with that to some degree. So one thing to be cautious of is the feed that you're feeding. If you're feeding the same thing to your cattle that you're feeding to your goats and sheep, you want to make sure that it contains ingredients that are safe for goats and sheep. Sometimes cattle feed and protein tubs have filler in it that are not healthy for goats and sheep. So do some research on that and make sure that what you're feeding your cattle is also safe for your goats and sheep. When it comes to cattle feed, I feed 12% uh, all stock. It's safe for cattle and it's safe for goats and sheep. Sheep are particularly susceptible to copper toxicity. When I say especially, I've never had a problem with it and I don't know anybody personally that's had a problem with it, but a vet would tell you that a sheep cannot metabolize copper. It tends to store in their liver, builds up over time, and can create a problem as time goes on. For that reason, you do want to be careful that the feed that you're feeding does not contain excess levels of copper, that the minerals that are out don't have a lot of copper in it. Also, the protein tubs that may be out, that they don't have a lot of copper in them. So if you already have cattle and you're considering diversifying into goats or sheep, the process is probably not as complicated as you may have thought it would be. I think that goats and sheep are probably a little bit more maintenance than cattle but they're definitely easier to handle and certainly much more profitable. If you're not sure which may be the best fit for your farm, I've got a video in which I talk about the characteristics of goats versus the characteristics of sheep, and that video may be helpful to you in making a decision. I'll link that at the end of this video. If you're within driving distance of Northwest Alabama and you're looking for goats or sheep, maybe a starter herd or flock, or maybe just additional breeding stock, give me a call, see what I have available. Subscribe to the channel for more videos that will help you succeed in raising goats and sheep. Thanks for watching and as always, happy farming.